Well, more now on our top story, that of the protests in Iraq by supporters of Shia cleric Muqtada al-Sadr. Mahmoud Abdul Wahed joins us again live from uh, Baghdad. Uh, what's going on now then? <laughs> Kerry, um, there have been reports about casualties uh, uh, from uh, tear gas canisters that were shot at the protesters by security forces. Uh, the media office of the Prime Minister Mustafa al Qazimi has just issued a statement reiterating al Qazimi's instructions to security forces to keep order and uh, maintain, uh, maintain security and safety of the state inst institutions. Now, these protesters do not seem to be back off, despite the fact that there have been injuries from uh, uh, tear gas uh, canisters. And they say that they will, they will continue moving on towards the green zone until the parliament responds uh, to uh, their demands. Uh, these protesters have come from several Iraqi cities. They're uh, mainly supporters of the Shia cleric uh, Muqtada uh, al-Sadr. They do not want the parliament to accept Mohammed Shia al Sudani as a prime minister, nominated by the coordination framework, the pro Iranian uh, political uh, or parliamentary bloc that is uh, backed by Iran. Now, these protesters uh, also say that they do not trust the judiciary. Their uh, protest today is not only against the parliament, they say they do not trust the parliament because they say that the parliament could hold a session uh, behind closed doors. So they want to put pressure on the parliament in order not to hold that session dedicated for electing a new president of the state and uh, naming a new uh, prime minister. They also say that they're blaming the Supreme Judiciary Council for, uh, for the stalemate the country has been suffering from uh, over the past few uh, months. That's because the Supreme Court uh, gave the Parliament uh, the right to, uh, uh, to hold or postpone uh, choosing uh, uh, a new, uh, president, a new uh, Prime Minister and forming the government, namely uh, the, major, the, the, the Southerist uh, bloc in the Parliament were not able to hold a session to uh, name a Prime Minister or form a government. That is because they never had a quorum reached in the Parliament due to uh, the absence of the coordination framework uh, lawmakers. So again, now they're protesting in front of the uh, heavily fortified uh, green zone, and they say they seem to uh, escalate. They want to escalate it. They want to uh, probably uh, to uh, hear instructions from their leader, Muqtada Sadr, to again, once again, storm uh, the green zone like uh, as they did on uh, Wednesday when they uh, stormed also the headquarters of the uh, parliament. And Mahmoud, with everything going on around you where you are and with the parliamentary session cancelled, what's likely to happen next? Well, there have been talks about mediations. Uh, the hope now is on the mediations, the under-the-table negotiations between the rival political factions. There have been mediations uh, from Iraq and also from regional, uh, namely from, uh, from, from Iran. Uh, there have been uh, reports about uh, Ismail Qa'ani, the, uh, commander, the commander of the Iranian Revolutionary Guard puts force. Uh, there have been reports about uh, uh, talks and mediations by Ismail Qa'ani for the past uh, few days between uh, the rival political factions, and namely the Shia uh, rival uh, factions, to uh, bring them to common ground. This is an attempt uh, from Iran to uh, probably heal the rift between Shia uh, political parties, because uh, by political norm, the prime minister is Shia since uh, the 2005 uh, constitution. By political norm, the prime minister should be Shia, the president of the state is Kurd, and the Speaker of the Parliament is uh, Sunni. So uh, these protesters say that they do not trust uh, the Parliament. They say they will continue protesting and they're planning to storm the green zone again unless they have a uh, guarantee. They have uh, uh, they, they guarantee that the parliament is not accepting Mohammed Shia Sudani as uh, nominated for prime minister. 
And Mahmoud, we understand there's a big security presence in Baghdad at the moment. Just how tense is the situation? It is, it is very tense. It is very tense since uh, uh, Wednesday, especially uh, yesterday, last night. Uh, these protesters started, already started coming from several cities uh, since last night. And there have been uh, blockings of, of main roads leading to the main square, the Tahrir Square here. But it was opened at the last moment. And also, uh, there have been security a security presence, heavy security presence in the area, deployment of security forces and uh, uh, also uh, security vehicles uh, upon request and upon instructions also from uh, Prime Minister Mustafa al kadhimi who instructed the uh, security authorities to uh, keep order and maintain security and safety of uh, state uh, institutions. That is especially following the Wednesday, uh, uh, Wednesday incident when these protesters stormed the green zone and also stormed the headquarter of the uh, parliament. It seems that the situation is likely remaining very tense until until these protesters get instructions from their leaders. OK, to, uh, we'll have to leave it there for, for a second. Forgive me, Mahmoud. Uh, we're going to have to leave it there for a second, Mahmoud. Forgive me in Baghdad because we have Dorsa Jabari, who is uh, elsewhere on the site, actually. Dorsa, if you can hear us, what's happening where you are? Well, as you can see behind me, there is a portion of uh, the wall that leads into the green zone behind it. Uh, the demonstrators here broke down that section of the wall uh, a few minutes ago, and they are now going into the green zone. Zoom into that area, you see the concrete that is laying flat now on the ground. That was once, uh, just a short while ago, part of the wall. We're going to try to move a little bit uh, closer to where these demonstrators are going in. The ones that you see, uh, the crowds walking towards this area, those are the protesters that gathered this morning from Tahrir Square. They are now making their way through this area and into the green zone. The parliament is on this side, a few hundred meters away. They are hoping to reach that uh, building in uh, the next few minutes. We understand the uh, aid to Muqtadr al-Sadr has said that there should be no bloodshed here. They're asking for the police and the demonstrators to respect each other and not to resort to any violence. But we've already heard of uh, injuries uh, that have taken place. And we also know that tear gas has been used. We can still smell it uh, where we're standing. We're going to try to get a little bit closer. I'm going to ask my cameraman, uh, Haider, to walk with me as we move in and you see the riot police here are standing by not doing anything they are allowing these protesters who have been peaceful for the most part so far to walk in to the green zone area they say that they are not happy with how the government has been handling their demands since the elections here which took place in October last year this is a very similar uh, scene to what we witnessed if, uh, about three years ago in October of uh, 2019 when the demonstrators at that point took over Tahrir Square and they occupied it for weeks on end now they're saying that they don't want the um, nominees that have been put forth by the Iranian-backed political groups in parliament to be uh, the next prime minister. They want a different system. This is what is left of that wall I was talking about a short while ago. We're going to try to go over with the protesters. And this is now you're looking into the green zone area. I'm just going to let you see what is happening here. And Dorsa, these are dramatic pictures that we're seeing here with calls for no bloodshed and no violence. What's the feeling you have of the mood of the protesters there? 
they seem to be very determined. I even had one of the uh, demonstrators uh, show me the casing of a canister that was fired at them. And the only thing he could convey to me, he didn't speak any English, but he said, this is what Iran sends to us from uh, their country. Certainly a very hostile environment towards uh, the Iranians that have had a foothold in this country now for quite some time. There is a sense that these demands that they've had for years now are falling on deaf ears. But this time, they have a very influential and powerful cleric and politician, Muqtadar al-Sadr, who is uh, very much behind them. This is uh, their his home base. This is his supporters that are here now demanding that they um, are not going to take part in a political system that they view to be very corrupt and uh, that has other countries involved in their political process. They want their country to be theirs and theirs only, and they want to be the only ones that have a say in their own political process and choose their own political leaders, including their prime minister and president. As you say, a very influential cleric there. What's your sense of how long the protesters may stay there for and how determined they are? Well, I think these pictures will speak for themselves. They have been here since early this morning and they are now walking towards uh, the parliament building. They are not stopping and the police certainly are not getting in their way. We've seen since this morning, it took us about three times as long to even get to our offices because all the main roads in the city are blocked. There is a, a severe police presence, security presence across Baghdad and this is why. For now, they seem to be content to allow these demonstrators to voice their discontent. We've only um, heard of tear gas being fired at them. And these demonstrators, as you can see, mostly young men, they really just want their demands, which um, to them is very basic. They want to be able to earn a decent living. They want to be able to have a say in the political process of their country. They want their political leaders uh, that they have elected and that are not under the influence of other countries. Um, I think the next few hours, a few days will be critical because what will be happening is um, there will be discussions taking place between the different political parties and the political leaders uh, to try and bring an end to this deadlock. But this is a deadlock now 10 months going. and. Whether or not they'll be able to do that remains to be seen. We know that Muqtada al-Sadr said he was withdrawing from the political process last month, and 73 of his MPs also resigned in protest because they said that they were not going to take part in a corrupt system. So whether or not they'll be able to come to some kind of an agreement to, pick, to get out of this deadlock, uh, we'll know in the next few days, hopefully, but those negotiations certainly must be taking place right now behind closed doors. And we also know that the toll that this in political instability is taking on Iraq is very much apparent uh, in everyday life here. There is still no budget for this year. The government has not had a budget for 2022. That means there is no accountability for where the money that this country makes is going. This is, of course, one of the world's biggest producer of oil. Uh, and they are one of the wealthiest, technically, according to their oil sales. But being in this city and talking to ordinary people, People, you certainly don't see any of that wealth being distributed amongst the population. Dorsa, we can we can hear the chanting and we can see around you there um, the police, uh, as you say, apparently not becoming involved, but clearly they they look like they are gearing up for uh, well to be prepared for all eventualities. Yeah, I just had my cameraman show you the uh, riot police here that have lined up. Uh, they're moving in closer to the area where we were uh, standing. And um, you can see they're quite um, calm. They're not keen to have any kind of confrontation take place. And I think uh, the general sense is after what happened uh, in 2019, a number uh, over 600 people died uh, in 2019 as a result of those demonstrations. There's certainly a, a feeling here that they don't want a repeat of that. There is a, um, a number of meetings that have taken place by the prime minister and the president uh, over the past few days uh, to try and bring some kind of um, recognition 
reconciliation. But uh, I think we're going to move out of here because the police are. Let's move back. Let's move back. We're just going to move back so the riot police can move in. Uh, I think there is a sense everybody involved, they don't want this to escalate any further. But the longer this instability goes on, the longer uh, the possibility of that becomes a reality. Indeed. And, and give us a sense of how difficult the economic situation is, which has at least partly led to some of the frustrations that we're seeing boiling over behind you now. Yes, uh, the last time I was here uh, was about two years ago, and unemployment was at all-time high. And they also had, of course, very difficult times with the pandemic. That was another factor. Um, the unemployment rate is uh, double digits, over well over 30 percent in Iraq. Most of the people that are uh, educated are unemployed, or if they are employed, uh, their salaries are very, very low. Uh, I've spoken to doctors uh, who, during the pandemic, were really hit hard. They were working around the clock, and their salaries are a few hundred dollars a month. This is a country that is not um, like certain places in the region where it's quite inexpensive to live. It is still very expensive. Property is expensive. Renting is expensive at uh, home. And the cost of daily life is also expensive. So there is a sense that people are not reaping the benefits of their own country's natural resources, which is oil and gas. And they say this is because of the corruption that exists on all levels of government, not just one, not just two, but across the board. And they blame a lot of that not only on the U.S invasion which happened here in 2003 but also on the influence of the United States and Iran that still very much exists in this country there is of course also within the, uh, the government itself the um, minorities uh, that also have issues with the central government in Baghdad the Kurd the Kurdish population in the north of Iraq they have to elect a president uh, after the elections which took place in October and they have still not been able to appoint a president who then is tasked with appointing the prime minister. There is a sense that their own divisions within that region is also creating instabilities here. So it's a very, very complicated uh, situation. And I think we are seeing the results of that unfold on the streets here today. OK, Dorsa Jabari, thank you for that update from where you are. We're now going to uh, cross back to Mahmoud Abdel. Wahed, uh, who is joining us live elsewhere on the site. Forgive the early interruption. Very fluid situation, as you can understand. What's happening now where you are? Here, if I hear the right, because there's a lot of noise around me now, because more protesters are coming in, heading towards the green zone. This way, right behind me, they're very close to the green zone. There are people already around the green zone being pushed back by security uh, forces uh, like my colleague Dorsa Jabari has just mentioned. Now, I have seen ambulances, ambulances heading towards the green zone and uh, uh, sounds of uh, tear gas canisters. Uh, according to reports that there are, there are some injuries by tear gas gas uh, canisters. Now, these protesters come from several uh, cities across Iraq, and they, they are strongly affiliated to Muqtada Asadr. They have been chanting here since the morning. They have been chanting uh, against uh, Muqtada Asadr's political rivals, namely the pro-Iran coordination uh, parliamentary bloc known as the coordination uh, framework. And despite, despite the clashes with security forces, despite the uh, tear gas canisters, by the violence, uh, by the fences of the green zone. Uh, but these protesters seem to be uh, determined to move on. They say that they will not back up. They will not pull out unless and until the parliament responds to their uh, demands. They say that they do not uh, trust the parliament. Uh, uh, they say that the, the parliament could probably hold that session that was postponed could hold it uh, behind behind uh, closed doors and uh, they say that they they say that we do not want to wait until they come up with Muhammad Shayya Sudani being 
uh, nominated uh, or being appointed as uh, prime minister. They say that we will continue, they will continue to put pressure on the government until the government responds to uh, their uh, demand. It's very chaotic here. It's very chaotic. They have, they have pulled down all concrete walls from on the way from the Tahrir Square in the city center on my left until until all the way until the green zone on my on, on my right there have been ambulances heading towards the green zone probably because of the casualties of the tear gas canisters and also there have been bulldozers heading that way probably try to remove uh, the the uh, the blocks put by security forces to prevent the protesters from advancing any further towards our in or close to the uh, green zone. Now that primarily relies all that situation. I mean, the solution now primarily relies on the mediation. The under the table, uh, on the margin, mediations uh, between rival factions. There have been negotiations. There have been mediations. The coordination framework, the pro-Iran parliamentary bloc, announced that it is started. It is started uh, under the table negotiations since Friday. Uh, whether or not this is uh, accurate, we cannot verify for the time being, at least for now. But there have been reports about about other mediations by Iran, namely by uh, the commander of the Revolutionary Guard Quds Force, Ismail Qani. He's been here in Baghdad for days now trying to mediate between the rival factions to reach a common ground in a way to heal the rift between namely the Shia political parties. The problem now lies within the Shia political factions. The Shia political factions, namely between Muqtada Sadr on the one hand and the pro-Iran uh, parliamentary bloc on the other hand. OK, or OK. Not, we're going to have to, we're going to have to leave it there. Mahmoud Abdul Wahed joining us live from teams. Baghdad. Thank you very much for that. We've been seeing dramatic pictures of protesters at Baghdad's heavily fortified green zone near the Iraqi parliament. Supporters of Shia cleric Muqtada al sadr gearing up for another day there of those demonstrations. We'll bring you a lot more on this as we get it here at Al Jazeera. For now, we'll leave you with those dramatic pictures.